Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today uh, again on the BNC Academy. This is uh, Mr. M. Dango. I'm your entrepreneurship trainer, business coach, and Mr. Automator. Well, 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 you know, as they say that, um, sometimes you need to go back and, and, and bow to some of the people that you have met along the way on your ladder to success. Okay, so the person that I have today is a, uh, to some of you who always attend my seminars, um, you also know uh, by the time that I explain of the period where I got employed for two weeks, I, I never got fired and I didn't resign, I just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, um, so right now uh, I managed to, uh, to, to get the person uh, who employed me, who's the person who inspired me so much, <laughs> yeah, the person that I just disappeared, I'm, and I'm sure he's still waiting for my resignation. <laughs> 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 well, Mr. Mnets, how are you? <laughs> I'm well, you, Mr. Mnyarati. <laughs> I'm doing very well. And first of all, I just want to say thank you so much sir, for, 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 for agreeing to be on my platform and also for doing this interview with me. I know you are super busy, somebody who is always uh, busy going there and there. But thank you so much for, for, for scheduling a time and, and put aside for me. Um, and thank you so much as well for being part of my success story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so uh, be, before we go any further, uh, can you please tell us, um, uh, who is Mr. Mobo can, can you tell us in a nutshell, I know you have a very long profile, but uh, can, can you just brief it for us? Okay, thank you very much, Nerat, for, for the opportunity for me to be part of the show. I believe this is going to inspire many people, uh, also on my side. Yeah, Mobo is Muneti, okay. Um, I am an entrepreneur, um, somebody who always wants to venture into new business opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in South Africa, I think 22 to 23 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, on my academic studies, I studied LLB law, business management, uh, wealth management, so on the professional qualification, I am a financial advisor. I'm also a legal advisor. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, those are most of the courses that I did. And you'll be actually be surprised. I also studied what they call permaculture. It's part of agriculture and root culture, but it's a profession that I don't think I'll ever be in. <laughs> yeah. So, Currently, I'm based in Johannesburg, Gauteng. Mm -hmm. um, although I'm running some few businesses, I also have got a permanent job. I'm working for Sunlam as a financial advisor. Okay. And people always have questions for me. Why am I working there at ETC? Why am I not managing my business at ETC? Um, I want to gain experience. There are some professions or some jobs that you go, not that you want to make money, mm -hmm. but oh, you yeah. want to get a the training. Yeah. so that you can get check that experience and then you can also use it into your own business mm -hmm. all right uh in terms of the business now i'm doing i'm in the transport logistics and there i'm in the repatriation uh food uh share order to some one of the companies like Dows or Rapumlani. i still put some shares there and uh, there are also other companies that I'm a director, that I'm not a, yeah, that I'm a director. Mm -hmm. wow. So that's what I can simply say about me on my introduction. <laughs> Great. You, you know, right, right now from finance house to, to funeral cover, to this, to that, everywhere, you are everywhere. Oh, uh, I, I am sure you are very busy. Um, but tell me something. Tell me something. Um, yes. How did you proceed to be where you are right now? Because, you know, most of the time um, uh, on Facebook, I follow you a lot. And, and most of the time, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just surprise us with some of the pictures that we don't even know. Uh, will this be Mr. More business that we know right now? Or, or is something that has potential? But, but you know, it, it inspires also, it shows that um, um, uh, we are not who we are right now if we take action mm -hmm. of changing whatever things that, uh, that we are doing. So, so yeah, so, so, so can, can, can you take me through the process? How did yes. you proceed yeah. from, from where you were to where you are right now, doing all sort of things? Yeah. 
Uh, what I can simply tell you, Munya, is that the best training in life, you get it from your parents. Oh. If your parents teaches you when you are growing up that this is the things that you need to do, and these are the things that you are not supposed to do, you will never change in life. Mm. I'll tell you, the time that I came this side, I was very young, mm. very, very young. And the journey from Zimbabwe to South Africa to Cape Town was not an easy journey at all. Mm. And um, I can simply say, uh, I grew up in a family, I cannot say rich or poor, but the parents were really struggling and financially struggling, everything they were struggling. And I'm coming from a family of eight children okay. and the parents were not fully employed. They were just GPs and farmers. And they worked maybe seasonal. If there's a drought, there's no money and it is. So life was very difficult when we were growing up. And I saw what my parents were going through in order for us to, 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 to support us. I'll give you an example. The way that we raised is that, that if there's a dress in the family, a new dress, mm -hmm. it was going to be weighed by five people. Ooh. If there's a shoe, my brother would give me the shoe when it becomes small and then I'll weigh it. And when it becomes small to me, I was also going to share with my young brother Tatenga. You see? Wow. So this is how we raised mm -hmm. as a family. So when I came to, when I came this side, mm. I said my life is to change and I don't want my background to stop me to achieve my dreams in a foreign land. Mm. And when I came this side, I was not having any professional qualification, no certificate at all. Mm. It was just an all year in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So I saw the opportunities in South Africa. Then I said, I have to, try to do something i'm not going to blame my background that no my parents were poor my parents they didn't take us to university my parents what what i said the background is not going to determine my future oh, yeah. i have to work with that and i have to change my the life is to change on me so that was the mindset i had when i came here wow. uh the difficult part is that you know, people, they lie too much. The South yeah. Africa, that they were telling me when I was in Zimbabwe, that, you know, if you go to Cape Town, you're going to do this and this and this mm. and ETC. There are many jobs, people. It was not really difficult. It was not easy to all my brother. I, I also encountered those challenges whereby when you arrive in a foreign land, you have to start from scratch. Mm. I was staying in a shack uh, where we were sharing five or six guys and there were no jobs at all, would struggle in each scene. But each day I was praying and saying, Lord, I want my life to change. I want to be a testimony to many people. And yeah, I'll tell you um, the time that I arrived, there were so many, there were many Zimbabweans who were there. Mm. And most of them, they were not even motivating me. Some of them, I'm telling you, talking about 2003, they would tell us that, 2002, sorry, that you guys have come to Cape Town, there are no jobs here, it's better for you to go back to Zimbabwe. Mm. Yeah, you know, there were a lot of negativity mm. from my fellow countrymen, Zimbabweans. Mm. I realized that those people were killing us in the spirit. They knew the potential that, we, that I had with my friends. And uh, so they were just discouraging us. Maybe they were scared that we, our lives were going to be better than them because some of them in that 2002, they've already been here for more than 10 years. And yeah, so, but I was prepared to do all kinds of jobs. I worked on a farm where I was getting 30 rand per day. I was feeding the horses. I worked also on graveyards and construction and ETC. But what I can simply tell you is that what also helped me in South Africa was my personality, my behavior, my behavior and my character. Oh, yeah. I didn't want uh, the environment in South Africa to change me. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. I would see a lot of times some Zimbabweans on Sundays, they gather, they do funny things, drinking. Some of them, they ended up fighting. They bring mm. different girls in their houses and ETC. I'm not, I'm not there to judge people. 
but I didn't want the environment to change me. Because people used to tell me, oh, you don't drink, I don't worry, this is South Africa, you're going to start drinking. Mm -hmm. But this never happened to me. <laughs> so uh, I was more focused. I will give you an example. When I, there's a time I was working and I was getting, I think was 50 rand per, per day. And then per week I was getting 200 rand and per month it was going for 800 rand. And the shake that I was staying, I was paying the rent about 200 rand. I was left with 600 rand. On that 600 rand, I was able to send my parents something to Zimbabwe. Wow. And of which I believe most of the young people, they don't mm -hmm. succeed in foreign land because they neglect their parents. They forget oh, yeah. about their future in ETC. Mm -hmm. So anyway, to cut the long story short, I told myself that I don't want to, con I, don't, I did not come to South Africa to be a farm worker. Mm -hmm. I did not come to South Africa uh, to, to, to work in construction, something mm -hmm. has to happen. Mm -hmm. So suddenly I started to push more that I should go to school and start. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so actually what carried you through from, from being um, uh, uh, who you were to who you are right now is the zeal or the hunger of getting what you didn't have when you were growing up and also seeing, uh, yeah, and also seeing like your, 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 your parents <laughs> struggling and say me struggling never again. And you know, I loved the other point again, <laughs> like uh, that, that you said, saying that um, uh, you, you didn't allow the environment and the people to change you to, or to actually determine you or, or, or uh, this is what you're supposed to do is simply because you're mood. Wow, this is such a motivation for me as well. You know, yeah, I, 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 I need to add something on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember this, I, I, at the time that I was working as a general labor at a mm. construction company, uh, the job was very difficult. You would wake up around five or six o'clock already are already at the site, it's very cold, sometimes it's very rain, it's sometimes raining, and it was just tight. Then I said to myself, ah, I don't want to continue to work here. It's better I find another job. Mm. Uh, that is better. Mm -hmm. Then I saw that the closest job that was going to change my life at that time, you know, in life, you need to grow. You cannot oh, yeah. be the same person again, again. You always have to self-evaluate yourself, your progress in life, in foreign land, mm -hmm your dreams, your achievements, or your plans. So I said to myself, I'm not going to work at this construction company for the next two or three months. Mm -hmm. Something is to happen because the job was very difficult for me. I couldn't <laughs> handle it very well. I couldn't. Yeah. So I met another guy. You know, if you want your life to change, you should also be interact with many people. Mm -hmm. I was talking to different guys, security guards, Mm -hmm. And I met this guy, his name was Ivy. Then I asked him, what job do you do? Then he said, my friend, I'm a security officer. Oh, I was so touched. Then I said, okay, are there some opportunities at your company? Then he said, no, if you can do a course, there's a course that you need to do. Then you give me your papers, I can go and speak to my manager. Mm -hmm. No, although they said that there's high crime in South Africa, mm -hmm. it's dangerous. Then I said to myself, I'm going to be a security mm -hmm. guard for a certain period of time so that I can raise money for my studies. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason why I decided to, to do the course. So what happened, I went to a college, then I told them that I'm a Zimbabwe and I want to register. Then they said, no, you, we can enroll you. But the only challenge is that these courses, they are very difficult. You have to attend the classes mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. You have to, yeah. Yes, you have to do it for almost a month because every week we must write an exam. Then if you pass, from security guard, you must start from grade E, grade D, grade C, grade B, grade A. But for you to get a job, it's better for you to do from grade E to grade C, but you must come every day to attend. Then I said, I won't be able, because I'm working at a construction company, I won't have time because I start work early in the morning and sometimes we work until even seven in the evening, but there's no overtime in ETC. Mm -hmm. Then I said to them, no, don't worry about that. Give me the, the papers, the, the, the modules, I'll go and read myself. And yeah, then they said, no, you won't be able to pass. Then I said, just give me, I'm going to read. So they gave me everything. Then I was reading during the break time, I would start during the lunch time. I take my lunch for five minutes. 
Then the other 40 minutes, I'm busy starting. Break time, check five minutes. Wow. So one of the bosses came to me another day. He saw me reading some books. Then he said, I've never seen such thing here at this company. What is happening? Who are you? <laughs> then I started to explain to him about I am a Zimbabwe. And he asked me, why do you want to leave this? And I said, my man, I appreciate the job that you are giving to me. But I just want more money so that I'll be able to further my studies. And then they were very touched. They came to me with other bosses and ETC. They started to give me support and say, no, so we're going to give you some off days if you've got an exam in ETC. So the point that I want to emphasize is that uh, the background is always supposed to teach you that oh, yes. life can change every opportunity that you need to use. I, it's disappointing that I've seen many people, they are still blaming apartheid even today. There are some people are still blaming opportunities in South Africa that there are no opportunities. They are not educated. They don't have any qualifications. Mm. I will tell you, some of my studies I did in South Africa with UNISA. UNISA, they don't need a permit. They don't need anything. Anyone can start. So if you have failed to, 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 to progress in Zimbabwe, you're in South Africa, use that South Africa as an opportunity to further your studies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, here you just touch another point. You know, blame game, blame game won't take you anywhere. You know, uh, blame game won't take you anywhere. And, and, and you know, you will see a youngster like me, somebody who was born yesterday is still blaming apartheid. <laughs> yeah. And you wonder which apartheid did you live in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that is a very big problem. And not only blaming South Africa, but also blaming uh, back home. But anyway, um, so, so, so this interview is there to also change and also evolve, uh, you know, and, and actually go and revoke of everything. Yeah, so, um, so right now, um, can, can you now tell us uh, what are some of the businesses that can benefit to, to, to some of our audience? Um, um, uh, and also, what's your next step? Where are you going? <laughs> yeah. All right. As I said to you, mm. my challenge to anyone, uh, we need to create opportunities for other people. Yes. Yeah. We don't just have to wait to say Munya has to do something, yes. more boys has to do something. I must do something personally. Mm -hmm. I must create opportunities. There are many young people who are coming from university and e, coming from universities and ETC. They also want jobs. So we have to do something. So to answer the, 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 your question about the next step in ETC, uh, at the present moment, um, what I normally do is every year I have to launch a new product. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you an example, like last year or early this year, unfortunately because of COVID, yeah. I realized that uh, there are so many uh, foreign nationals or local people in the country who are struggling to get loans from the banks, mm -hmm. from financial institutions. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they are working, they've got valid asylum papers, they've got valid refugee status, but unfortunately, banks, they don't want to give them loans because they are Zimbabwean, yeah. which I believe that is unfair, to be honest. Yeah. So now I launched the company that is called uh, Munez um, uh, Financial Solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, Munez Financial Solutions will be giving loans. We suppose actually have started giving the loans when before the, the, okay. the COVID-19 yeah. started year. Yeah. We want to empower people are failing to get loans to start their businesses. We want to empower people who uh, wants to do different projects. Mm. So when this financial solutions were supposed to have started operating before the lockdown, we give loans to people, especially with asylum papers, people with refugee status. People are also planning to, to buy houses. They are foreign nationals who have been in South Africa for many years, but oh, they yeah. can't get both. So I, I registered the company, then I brought investors, some people overseas and said, guys, this is an opportunity for us. Let's work together. Let's empower people. Even South Africans, if they want to come and apply our loans, they must. We've got a license. We did all the paperwork. We've got the license from the government that allows us to operate as uh, uh, credit providers. Yeah. That's the business that we're supposed to do that I believe will actually empower many people who have been here. I'll, I'll just give you an example. Yeah. If you have been in South Africa for 15 years, 
is your home still Zimbabwe or in South Africa? Currently, it's South Africa. Yeah. So I wonder why banks they don't want to give those people bonds and ETC. So that's the project that we that we are working on that we decided to put on hold because of the COVID. And um, also, we're going to launch a, a funeral product very soon. Uh, I've got experience from moonlight, the days from moonlight. I've got experience yeah. from days from uh, from 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 dabs. I know what is required. I've got a very good relationship uh, with the with the stakeholders, the local community, NGOs, the grassroots. So it's one of the projects that are coming. And then we've got a product a project of the bus that I started with my fellow guy oh, friends yeah. like um, um, Captain Chimene, um, Montara, and ETC whereby we realize that there are many Zimbabweans mm. in, in South Africa, and we believe that Zimbabweans have money. Some of them, they don't know how to use their money. Oh, yeah. We have situations on social media when, whereby somebody said, I've got 30,000, what can I do? I've got 200,000 in ETC. Mm -hmm. But for now, we said, let's start by having a project of a bus that will be operating from South Africa to Zimbabwe, and the bus is going to be owned by the people. The good news is that the bus is already there. Right it was there. supposed to start with operating on the 10th of October, but unfortunately, the Zimbabwean government refused to open the border. So it's a project that is going to be launched very soon. Mm. Uh, that is for this year. Those are the things that we are focusing much on at the moment. Mm. Wow. Hey, 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 Mr. Abnett, I have no idea. How do you do all these things? You sleep going to, 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 to start. I, 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 I don't sleep. Let me be honest with you. The stage that I am in life, I can only sleep a little bit to, to, for a few hours, but there's a lot of sacrifices. Oh. Uh, the big problem that I've seen with many business owners, their business, they, they quickly for because they let direction they oh, get yeah. excited that i'm a director of a company i'm the ceo of the company oh, yeah. business does not operate in that way you have to be very humble my brother oh. and uh you have to sacrifice a lot for example on the funeral repatriations i drive there's another time i drove from a job to arari uh if i'm correct maybe how many kilometers job to arari should be maybe one uh i'm not sure if i'm correct maybe it can be thousand kilometers yeah i drove from Jobek to Harare, and then from Harare, i did not sleep uh, from Jobek to Harare. then uh from Jobek to Harare, it was almost one night driving the whole night mm -hmm. then from Harare, i drove to a place called uh Gokwe. Yeah. it's very far yeah from Gokwe, i drove to karoi Karoi, I drove to Harare without sleeping. Harare, I drove to Mutare. Yeah. Then to Mutare, that's why I managed to sleep in Mutare. Then from Mutare, the next day, early in the morning, I drove back to Harare. From Harare, I drove to Johannesburg. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, that weekend was just hectic. Mm -hmm. The point that I'm trying to emphasize is that when your business is growing, mm -hmm. effort is needed, commitment yeah. is needed. Yeah. So most of the people, the moment they become CEOs, they are sleeping in their houses. Mm. They are um, managing people. Your presence sometimes is needed and is very important. Mm. Oh, yeah, because it's you who knows where do you want to take your business. It's you who know every button of your business. Wow. Thank you so much. So entrepreneurs, there you go. You heard it. Um, um, if you qualify, Contact um, the, uh, a, a MFS um, right away. Yeah, uh, you, you know, one thing that I've learned about Mr. Abnett, all of his company is MFS. <laughs> yeah, all of his companies. So, so it can be Munet's financial solution or it can be something, you know. <laughs> I, I also want to say, emphasize one thing, Munya. I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity that you have created. I pray that many young people will be able also to join you. Mm -hmm. And you are somebody who is willing to share information with young people. You don't want only yourself to succeed. Mm -hmm. You are sharing your bread, your children's bread with everyone. Uh, I think on Sunday, there's an event that I'm going to attend in, in Johannesburg. 
there are many business people who will be coming to attend. So these opportunities, they are very important in terms of networking. Mm -hmm. So I urge everyone, whenever there's a business seminar, just go and join, get the oh, information. Yeah. The information can help you in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, any opportunity, you know, it, it, you need to attend events so that you can meet people. Once you meet people, you learn from them and keep growing. Thank you so much, Mr. Ness. You know, I could have you for the whole day because there is so many things that I wanted to unpack. But be, be, because of our time, you know, um, uh, yes, we yes, can't but, yeah, but I know there will be a, 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 another interview again in the near future that you're going to do and then we can unpack more as well. But uh, thank you so much, my, uh, uh, my brother, for for sharing whatever that that is, sharing. and for, and thank you for allowing me to, to 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 go and make you being vulnerable and actually say some of the. Thank you very I'm much. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, okay thank you so much. Yeah, uh, uh, thank yes, you so much for that. Um,